Good morning and welcome to New Milton Evangelical Free Church's Thought for the Day. Let's begin our time together by praying, shall we? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and we thank you particularly for your word and we ask that you may make it, it for us our daily spiritual food. And we ask that you may uh, reveal to us glimpses of your glory, that by it we may love you more dearly and seek you more intently for Christ's sake. And in his name we pray. Amen. Do you know, John's Gospel concludes that uh, if the whole world, all its libraries, uh, couldn't contain all the things that had been uh, seen and heard from the Lord Jesus, and yet... John here chose to include this account, as a, an opportunity for us to, as it were, eavesdrop on a truly intriguing conversation, one between our Lord Jesus Christ and Nicodemus. Nicodemus, one of the most impressive Jewish religious leaders of his time, a man of great uh, influence and esteem, and yet one who in himself had a yearning dissatisfaction enough to seek an audience with Christ by night in secret and who said in his own words that he knew that Jesus had come from God. Jesus, well Jesus is the ultimate revealer of God himself isn't he? He is God incarnate which means literally God come down in human flesh. He's the long-awaited Jewish Messiah and the saviour of the world, the one about whom all the scriptures testify. John goes on to say two chapters later, every religious Jewish practice points ultimately to uh, looking forward to Christ's arrival. Jesus has attempted to explain to Nicodemus the answer to his inner yearning, his need for new spiritual birth. He does this first by alluding to Old Testament prophecy, particularly Ezekiel 36. Now, in our verses we focus on today, he reasons from a passage of narrative. It's one with which Nicodemus would be extremely familiar, namely the account of the bronze snake being lifted up in the desert in Numbers chapter 21. In the previous verse, verse 13, Jesus is the revealer of God, the one who came from heaven. Now, Jesus is the serpent, the serpent. Read all about it. Uh, cries the newspaper vendor of John's day. You see, headlines grab our attention. For Jesus to liken himself to the serpent is attention-grabbing for Nicodemus and us alike. What image comes to your mind when you think of a snake? Is it maybe ugh, revulsion or fear? Get that thing away from me. <laughs> I'm reminded of a situation in my earlier time in youth and children's at ministry as a volunteer, a young lad, only seven or eight at the time, learnt that I was an estate agent. And he said, ah, oh, my dad says that you lot are snakes in suits. <laughs> he later became a Christian and apologised. But do you see, it's a, it's a, a contemptuous uh, figure to uh, cite in a way. What's the most obvious biblical picture, though, that when you think of a serpent? Might it be the more crafty uh, creature in Genesis 3, the deceiver, the one who was cursed above all livestock, the one whose head would one day be crushed under uh, God's heel? Well, therefore, that makes it all the more shocking a title, doesn't it? But Jesus is the one who likens himself to a serpent in this analogy. This is what he says, though in verses 14 and 15. Just as Jesus lifted up at the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So if that Old Testament prophecy hasn't got through to Nicodemus, Jesus says to himself, now let's see, let's try an account from a narrative in Numbers 21 for you, Nicodemus, and help you understand. Do you remember the people in the wilderness, the rebels against God, impatient, grumbling against God? They were disciplined by God with a curse of venomous snakes that were biting them. People were dying. 
And so they cried out for God's mercy, as we often do in a crisis situation. They repented, they recognised their sin. And God instructed Moses to make a bronze snake to be lifted up. And everyone who was bitten by the snake looked to the bronze snake. And if they did, by faith, look at that bronze snake, they would be healed and saved. They would be given new life, new physical life. And so here, Jesus likens himself to a snake, a, a figure of a disgrace, a creature that's a killer, a, a, and a creature that's a cursed one. But Jesus is pointing to his substitution for the curse of Nicodemus's sin. There's purpose in this analogy. Let me help you to see it in the light of two other cross-references from the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, God made him, that's the Lord Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us. And Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Jesus condescended to reach us. He came down from above in his eternal glory with the Father. He became a curse. He became our sin. He became the serpent. But notice here that it's the snake also of hope and life and salvation. Jesus is challenging Nicodemus to turn to him, to turn to him for new spiritual birth that will satisfy his deepest longing. And so I ask today, what is our response? What is your response to Jesus the serpent? Just like in Moses' time in Numbers chapter 21, the people were to look to the serpent, the bronze serpent lifted up on a pole for their new life, for their salvation. So we're to look to him for life, for eternal life, as he was lifted up or exalted on the cross. We are to look and believe in the Lord Jesus who can, uh, gi uh, to, who can give uh, us new life, new spiritual birth into a living hope, hope of eternal life in him. And so I urge you this morning uh, to believe in him. Lift your eyes to Christ. Look and be saved. You see, he became uh, the serpent, uh, uh, the one on the cross, so that when we look to him lifted up before our eyes, that in our hearts we would look and be saved. Honour the God who lifted up his son on the cross. Honour God by looking to Jesus with your eyes and be saved. That honours God, that is your hope. Let's pray together to finish. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that in this shocking analogy uh, that Jesus used to uh, appeal to uh, Nicodemus's yearning for something he lacked, that it may speak to us today, that we look to the Lord Jesus, who also was lifted up as that uh, figure of uh, hope and of salvation. And we pray that many would look to him lifted on cross, who ultimately was exalted and glorified in uh, eternal glory with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.